Welcome to a new episode of Building My Veggie Garden. We're coming to you from our new location at the Beacon Food Forest. We have lots to share with you about our new home and the worm farm we made. Welcome to our new garden. For the past few months, we've been building a new garden at the Beacon Food Forest in Central Florida. The Beacon Food Forest is home to about 30 gardeners and thousands of fruit trees, medicinal plants, and vegetables. Having our garden in a forest is almost like growing our vegetables in the wild. Let's take a look at what we've been doing. For the past three months, we've been busy growing purple sweet potatoes, blue butterfly pea flower, epozote, sweet mint, basil, black-eyed peas, tender sweet orange watermelon, roselle, dragon fruit, and chipoline. We were fortunate to have inherited a papaya tree, Cuban oregano, passion fruit, and other trees around our garden. Having all these plants made us think of our need to have an organic fertilizer that can benefit all kinds of plants, including vegetables, flowers, fruit trees, and herbs. The fertilizer also needs to be affordable. The answer was easy to find. Worm castings, because they are a plant superfood. They provide plants with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, essential nutrients for plants. They also provide other minerals for plants like iron, sulfur, zinc, copper, and calcium. And by making our own worm farm, we can have affordable worm castings. Vermicompost is a fancy word that refers to the process of taking your kitchen scraps, feeding it to worms, and getting worm castings or worm manure. This process takes place on a worm farm. Compared to traditional composting, vermicompost is better because it contains higher quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Does this mean that we will stop composting? No, it means we will have more than one way to help us amend our soil. And this way is affordable, organic, reduces more waste going into landfills, and takes up less space than traditional composting. Making a worm farm was the right thing to do for our new garden. These were the things we needed and used to build it. Two recycled buckets, one piece of screener, 100 worms. Red wriggles are the best kind of worms for a worm farm. One brick of coconut core, compost, one third of a bucket, one drill. We cleaned our buckets very well. We asked our friend John to help us drill holes in our buckets. The most important holes are on the bottom of our bucket to ensure liquids drain into the second bucket we will place underneath our first bucket. We also needed holes to allow air in our worm farm. So John drilled some holes on the top edge of the bucket and the top of the bucket. He also gave us a piece of screener that we will place on the bottom of the bucket. The screener will prevent the worms from falling into the bucket underneath and will drain the worm farm. We put our coconut coir brick in water to hydrate it and make it soft and fluffy. This is important because in the first two days, our worms fed on it. We mixed it with our compost, making sure it was moist. Now for the fun part. We took our worms from the bag in which they were delivered. We checked the instructions, looked at our worms, and made sure they were alive. They looked skinny and dried. That means they need food and water. We do not want to disturb our worms more than they already have been. We place them on the top of the soil and let them find their way to the bottom of the bucket. Worms do not have eyes, but they sense the light, especially at their front end. They do not like the light and will move away from it. Do not take your worms out of the bag until you are ready to place them inside the bucket. Once our worms were in the bucket, we had a worm farm. The ideal temperature is 55 to 80 degrees. We also placed a couple of pieces of cloth between the buckets to prevent them from getting stuck to each other. We will be collecting the liquid that drains from the top bucket called worm leachate. If this liquid has a foul smell, do not use it in a vegetable garden or any plant. Discard it by dumping it in the toilet. If it has no smell, you can pour it in your plants, but not your vegetable garden. For the first two days, we did not feed the worms. They needed to adjust to their environment and get hydrated. 
they fed on the coconut bar. After two days, we placed some food and water in the bucket. We had some papaya and persimmon peels and coffee grounds. We dug a little hole and buried the food. This prevents the food from attracting flies and other pests and from getting foul odors. The amount of food we placed in the bucket is twice as much of the weight of the worms. We got a hundred worms. That's about three ounces. So when we fed our worms, we gave them six ounces of food. It will take the worms one week to eat this amount of food. After four days, we checked the food and made sure the worms were eating it. And they are. If after a week, the worms haven't finished the food, we do not put more food in it. We will wait until all the food is gone. The following is a list of foods that worms enjoy. 1. Leafy greens like lettuce, kale, and Swiss chard. 2. Melons, squash, and pumpkins. 3. Broccoli. 4. Sweet fruit like papaya and apples. 5. Coffee grounds. 6. Tea bags. 7. Eggshells. What worms shouldn't eat? 1. Citrus like lemons, oranges, and limes. 2. Spicy food, chili, onions, or garlic. Three, meat and milk products. Four, bread and pasta. Five, cooked or processed food. Six, oils and oily food. Making your own worm farm is easy and the worm castings will be a great addition to your vegetable garden. We will update you about how to collect the worm castings and how to make a worm tea soon. As always, thank you for tuning in. We're always happy to have you in our garden. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our social media channels. See you next time. Bye.